Doc Talk is brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, a market leader in combination respiratory vaccines. Hey there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm tickled to death you joined us today. We're going to talk about starting high risk calves on feed and some of the new management techniques, maybe some of the new products. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned and enjoy the show. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. I'm at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and I'm the director of the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State. And I'm lucky enough to get to host this show and spend some time with you. And today, we're going to talk about something that occurs every year in the beef industry, and that's managing high-risk cattle coming into whether it's a grow yard, a stalker operation, or going into a cattle feedlot. High-risk cattle are cattle that, in my opinion, are mismanaged from the cow herd. These are cattle that are weaned on the truck. They don't know what a bunk is, they don't know what a water tank is, they haven't been vaccinated, they're not dehorned, they're not castrated, they're not prepared for the transition from the cow-calf operation to the feedlot. And, and there are two things that make an animal sick. One, an overwhelming dose of a pathogen like IBR virus or BVD or, or, or a bacteria like, like Mannheimia hemolytica. Or we have a suppressed immune system from stress. Whether it's not being prepared and winding up at the feed yard where you're at a place where you don't know where the food's going to come from or you, you, the, we're going to castrate those calves, all of these things will increase the amount of stress that these calves will face when they come into the facility. So the first thing I think about is when we unload these cattle into a feed yard, I'm looking at that receiving pen. And the receiving pen is the place where we're going to keep those cattle from the point in time that they're unloaded until the point in which we process them. And, and that facility needs to have some place for cattle comfort. We need to ha make sure that if it's hot out, we have shade. If it's cold and wet and damp, we need to have some mud control and need to make sure that these animals, because the first thing that calves, high-risk calves coming off a truck from long haul want to do is they want to lay down and they want to rest. So, so it's almost as important as our vaccine is making sure that we give these animals a comfortable place to lay down. In the bunk, I want to fluff up hay. I'm going to take hay, I'm going to fluff it up in the, in the bunk. It's something the calves recognize as food, they see it, and they can, they can identify it. The other thing I want to make sure of is water tank. And a lot of times when we think about water tanks in receiving areas, we don't think about necessarily, we think about the amount of, of space we have. And if you don't have enough space from an automatic water tank and it's hot out, we need to roll a silver tank or something with some increased linear water tank space into that pen so that those calves can get around there and, and get a drink. The other thing is, is making sure calves can identify where the water is. Calves use the three senses to find water, sight, smell, and hearing. You can turn on a pick cock on a water and calves can hear the water rolling. You can pop the plug and sometimes I'll clean out the water tank and form a little bit of a water bog in front of that water tank so that calves recognize that that's water. And the other one is when the pit cock's rolling or the mud's formed, they can smell that water as well. We're going to take a break and we're going to go to commercial. When we come back, we're going to talk about moving those cattle from the receiving area into the processing area. When we start talking about the processing area, we're talking about improved cattle handling, low stress cattle handling, facility design, the products that we're using and how we're going to move those cattle through as being the welcome wagon for that stalker, backgrounder, feedlot operation. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. 
We'll be back right after these messages. This Meet the Veterinarian is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Dr. Doug Ford is the owner of Beaver Creek Veterinary Clinic, located in Brush, Colorado. He is also a partner in Production Animal Consultation, a science-driven, people-focused group of advisors serving animal protein producers worldwide. Doug and his wife, Jan, are the proud parents of five adult children, and as a family, they are passionate stewards of their ranches and livestock. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Baxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and today we're talking about managing high-risk cattle. And in my past experience, whether it was in private practice where, where I was a feedlot consultant or whether or not I was spending time with, with starting our own calves on feed, as you can see here from some of the experiments we do here at K-State. Low stress cattle handling and moving these cattle properly through a cattle feeding facility at the time of process is, is super important for alleviating stress. Once we get those cattle to the feed yard, and, and generally the first question people would ask me is, when should I process cattle relative to arrival? And my general rule of thumb is for every hour they're on the truck, I give them an hour of time to rest and recuperate. So if we have short haul cattle or local cattle that we bring in from, from local auction markets, I may process those cattle right off the truck and, and go right into the processing barn. The other thing is if I have cattle that are coming from the southeast, the northwest, south central Texas, wherever, and those cattle are on the truck for, for 20 to 24 hours, those animals are going to get a day in the receiving pen to drink water, rest, get some hay, and get their energy level up so that when we work those calves, they go through the processing barn and we kick them out into their home pen for, for the receiving period. So we decided now we're gonna process these calves. They're gonna come through the processing facility. And one of the things I really encourage people to do is get online, whether it's, it's at the Beef Cattle Institute or at grandonlivestock.com, or, or Daniel's Manufacturing, and, and, and talk to Tom Knopfsinger, talk to Kip Lucas Savage, talk to Temple Grand, and people within the industry, there's a lot of expertise out there in designing the facilities properly. I know that good cattle, handling, good cattle handlers can move cattle through any facility low stress. 
However, if you have turnover or if you have people that maybe aren't as astute cattle handlers, the facility can make a huge difference. And, and regardless of your level of cattle handling, having the proper facilities, the proper design is huge for moving cattle through these, through these, these facilities. Some of the ways that you can tell whether or not you have good low stress cattle handling or not is look at how the cattle exit the chute. If they're exiting the chute, more than 25% of them with their tails up running, because somebody did something bad to me back there or something back there spooked me, I'm getting out of here. That can be in a, some way of a understanding objectively about your cattle handling. You should not be using a hot shot on cattle more than 10% of the time as set forth by the beef quality assurance practices. So these are some things that you can measure on your own and just looking and seeing how cattle are flowing through the facility is really, really important. We're gonna uh, shift gears from cattle handling to, to what products we're going to use at the processing barn and what we've done with some of our survey work here at Kansas State when we've interviewed some of the practitioners that are handling these high-risk calves on a day-to-day -day basis and that gets back to some of that management it gets back to some of the things that we've talked about as far as new technology new vaccines new drugs stay tuned we really appreciate you watching Doc Talk and it's going to be more right after the break This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100, Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batrol 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi there, it's Dr. Dan with your On the Farm Tip, and today we're going to talk about downed animals, specifically beef cows. When we have downed animals, we can't move those animals by dragging them or lifting them with chains. What we have to work with is we have to pick those animals up to move them to a different location. You're going to want to use a, a sled, a low boy, uh, the bucket of a loader, something like that to move those animals. Once you've moved them, you need to make sure that you provide shelter, nutrition, and water for these animals. As they continue to respond and rise, those animals will go back into production. If they don't, make sure that you consult with your local veterinarian to make sure this animal gets the best possible care. You're watching Dr. Thompson here on Doc Talk on your On the Farm tip, and we'll see you down the road. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batro 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batro 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batro 100, right the first time. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from Kansas State University and today we're talking about high risk cattle and management. And we've talked about moving them from the receiving area through the processing facility and now they're in the chute and we've got to make some decisions on things that we're going to do. And we recently did a study when we interviewed veterinarians or did a survey that, that 
Ask veterinarians that, that are handling a lot of these high-risk calves that was published in Bovine Practitioner Journal about what are some of the things that they're recommending as far as vaccinations and, and therapies for cattle that are, that are mismanaged or these high-risk calves as they come into the feedlot. And we'll start out the first thing with is, is castration and castration technique. And what the veterinarians indicated that as animals got bigger, as we moved from the 300 pound bull to a 500 pound bull to an 800 pound bull, as the increase in in weight increased, we moved from more of a surgical castration with the lighter weight group to more of approach with banding on the heavier weight or larger, larger cattle or, or animals that are bigger that are still bulls on arrival. The key to bulls on arrival is making sure that we don't have them arriving at the feed yard intact. We really have to work hard as an industry to castrate those calves before three months of age when we're talking about commercial cattle. As far as vaccinations and, and recommendations, nearly 100% of the people surveyed recommend a modified live IBR, infectious bovine rhinotracheitis, and BVD vaccinations. So, type 1 and type 2 BVD. So the first thing on the checklist is a, is a modified live IBR BVD type 1 and type 2 vaccination. 67% of the people in the survey are recommending a BRSV and PI3. And if anybody that's given these types of modified live vaccines, you know that all five antigens come in a five-way modified live product. So my recommendation, we got to get that five-way modified live product into these high-risk calves at the time of processing. The next one is the use of a pasturella or a hemolytica, Mannheimia hemolytica. It's hard for me to change the terminology from pasturella to Mannheimia, but it's, it's 10 or 12 years now, so I ought to get over it. But using a Mannheimia vaccine is recommended by 75% of the consulting veterinarians that we surveyed. So that's another vaccine that, or antigen that we want to use at the point in time of processing. No other vaccines besides Clostridium or blackleg, seven-way blackleg, are really recommended. And, and the recommendation on the black leg vaccines is that if you know that cattle have had one on arrival, they probably don't need one. If you know that they've had one prior to arrival, they probably don't need one on arrival. But if I know that they haven't got one or I don't know the history on those calves, you want to make sure that you get a seven-way clostridial vaccine. Now, if you ban bulls, you need to make sure that the tetanus antigen is in there. So you make sure that you have the clostridium tetanus in the black leg vaccine so it's an eight-way clostridial really important on the vaccinations. Nobody's really recommending that we use the lepto vaccines. There was a uh, 0% response on the Miraxella bovis uh, vaccines for pink eye, and there was zero response or zero veterinarians indicating that they were using the mycoplasma bovis vaccines at the feed yard level. And those are all things that we're asked about on a consistent basis. Five-way modified live viral, manheimia, and the black leg or seven-way clostridial vaccine really covers our vaccines on these high-risk calves coming into the feed yard. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to wrap up and talk just a little bit more about what we're going to do at the process of these high-risk calves. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're really glad that you joined us. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Today, we're going to talk about taking care of your syringe and cleaning it after you get done. First thing you want to do is take the syringe and clean the outside with warm soapy water, get all the manure and, and different things off of the syringe. Then you're going to take the syringe apart to clean the inside. On the inside of the syringe, never use soap. Only use warm water to rinse that inside of the syringe out. We're going to let the syringe dry, and after it dries, we want to put it in a dust-free environment. One of the best places, put it in a Ziploc bag and then put it in your freezer. But before you use the syringe for the next time, Make sure that you allow that syringe to warm up to room temperature. That's today's BQA tip of the day. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Hi there, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Be sure to join me at the 47th annual AABP convention 
September 18th through the 20th. I encourage anybody that's involved in the beef or dairy veterinary profession to attend. Reconnect with other professionals and learn about the practical applications in the beef and dairy industry. There will be scientific sessions, clinical forums, and over 100 animal health exhibitors. If you're a practitioner, a technician, or a vet student, join me at AABP. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you in Albuquerque. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. You know, I think people are just kind of born with a passion. I wouldn't be where I am today without that horse. Oh, I'm not passionate about horses. That's just something that's in here. I, I can't explain it. Some people go to a job every day. I just go do what I love to do. That's all I know is horse. The bottom line, we're for the horse. It's whatever we can do to make life better for the horse, wherever they are, whatever they do. It's just magic, that's all. It just, they it just, they got me. If we always do what's right for the horse, we will never go wrong. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from Central Kansas on a great day. Glad that you joined us. And we're talking about starting high risk calves as we're getting ready for the calf run. And we've talked about moving them from the receiving pen through the process and facility and we got them in the chute and we've already gone through castration techniques and, and some of the vaccines. People will ask me, which vaccine do you choose? And I say, pick a modified live vaccine. I really don't have a big preference. And that leads me right into our next topic is, is metaphylaxis. And what is metaphylaxis? Metaphylaxis or control of bovine respiratory disease is when we use an antibiotic on arrival and we mass treat the group of calves and we don't know and, and for the most part why we call it metaphylaxis instead of prophylaxis is we have cattle of all different uh, spectrums of the disease process going on. We may have some calves that are subclinically ill with bovine respiratory disease, some that are just starting to get infected, and some that are sick. And so we don't have cattle all prior to being sick or prior to being infected. We have them at different levels of, of the disease process. So. People, the first thing they'll say is, is uh, you know, which drug should I use? And again, we have about five or six quality labeled products for metaphylaxis or mass treatment off the truck, and they all do a wonderful job. You really need to work with your local practitioner to pick out that drug and, and, and pick the one that's best for you in your area. But I don't have a preference as far as which one I'm going to utilize. The other thing is, is that people are going to say, what about the timing of the metaphylaxis? Should I give it right? at the time of processing or should I wait two or three weeks when I have that massive outbreak? And, and I'll be honest with you, the research dictates that you're just as well to give those cattle the metaphylaxis right at the time of processing as you are if you would wait one or two weeks and run those calves through the chute again. You decrease the amount of stress, the antibiotics on board, and, 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 and you're going to be doing just as good a job from published research. So, so Vaccinations, metaphylaxis, we want to make sure that we do, uh, deworm these animals or use an indecticide to, to get rid of internal and external parasites, whether it's a pour-on or an injectable product. We, we generally recommend the injectable products, but I have no doubt that, that there are good reasons for using both injectable and the pour-on products. Um, castration, dehorning, if you're going to dehorn a calf at the time of arrival, we really re recommend that you tip that animal instead of completely removing the horns. I think there's a, a myth going on out there in the country that, that we have to have these horns knocked down to six inches or the length of the ear. Really what, when you talk with the packers and, and things to that nature, just tipping those horns 
not worrying about, we can't have these horns that are two foot or these, these corrientes or these longhorn steers being able to go through the facilities. But if you're going to dehorn, you're going to make sure that, it's, that we just tip the insensitive part of the, the horn after they've arrived. So I really appreciate you joining me today. We didn't get through all the topics. There's still more to discuss, and we'll continue to do that on Doc Talk and other episodes. Be sure to work with your local practitioner, and if you want to know more about Doc Talk or see some of our archived episodes, go to www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University. I'm sure glad that you joined us. I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, a market leader in combination respiratory vaccines.